and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Drew. I have a granddaughter. She is the absolute love of my life. Even though not one drop of my blood is flowing in her, she's from my stepson. Now this is a child who's had a pretty tough life. And she is very verbose about her opinions. But she is not open about her emotions. When she's happy, her smile literally goes from ear to ear. Her eyes close tight. Her fists shake because she's ecstatic about whatever it is. When she's sad, her lip curls over all the way past her chin. Her body slumps. Her shoulders sag. And you can just sense this happiness or sadness in the child. But she will not share with me her feelings. If it's food, it's Opa, I love this, or Opa, I hate it. If it's a TV show, I love this show, Opa, or I hate this show. Now, last summer, she came up for two weeks. She was nine years old. My wife took a week off from work and took her shopping, of course, because it's my wife's Barbie doll, for all intents and purposes. And she goes, Sky, what do you think? Isn't this cute? Really, Grandma? Really? This is a nine-year-old going on 29. Then I took a week off, and I kept her for a week. Every day, I picked this child up. I held her close to me. I hugged her. I whispered in her ear, Opa loves you more than anything else in the world. And all I would get back from her is, I know, or, okay, and that was it. There was no sense of feeling from this child. I was becoming slightly despondent because I'm giving her everything and I'm getting nothing on Sunday afternoon, I had to drive her back to Sacramento, back to her mom, and we came back up to Reno that evening. And I walk in the house, and I was thirsty, and I walked over to the refrigerator to open it up to get something to drink, and lo and behold, there's a note on the refrigerator, held up by a magnet. I love you, Opa. I got through to her. This child, in her way, expressed herself back to me. Now, why is this important? Last week, Ann was in here talking to you about Face Forward and Children's Cabinet. They have, they call them kids, children, whatever. They're 18 to 24 years old. They're young people who have lost their way. They may not trust. They may not believe. And the hope is, is that you folks will step in and share with them who you are, what you have experienced. If you think about it, the situation that you're in right now classically mirrors what they're going through as well. They've lost their path. They need somebody to talk to them, to say, have you thought about it? Have you considered it? Do you think? Now... I got some more information last week about this program, and David and I are even considering signing up for this. If you would like to give two hours a month of your life to deal with an 18 to 24 year old, to give them the guidance, to give them the direction, today at 11 o'clock, down in the joint admin office, follow the hallway all the way to the very end. If you go into the parking lot, you've gone too far. <laughs> And on the left-hand side is the admin office, room 115. Go in there, there's a small conference room, 11 o'clock today, and they're going to start doing a briefing for you guys as to what this is that entails, what is it going to require of you, and what, what they're looking for from you. It's going to be a briefing. I have applications here. You're going to have to fill those out because basically you're mentoring kids, young people. Okay? We're looking for you guys to help out. We'd love to have 10 to 15 of you to step up to the plate and do this. There's going to be some time requirement on your part, but again, it's basically two hours a month plus a little 
for baseball games and movies and stuff like that, which apparently the program's going to pay for. You'll get a full briefing if you do this. So I would highly encourage, if you have an interest in giving back, if you have an interest in helping a young person, if you have an interest in reaching through, maybe you won't get that placard or that piece of paper on your refrigerator. But if you get somebody to say thank you, if you get somebody to turn their life around, if you get somebody to find a direction, then you have been successful. And if you can do that in a couple of hours a week, or a couple hours a month, is it a month, David? It's a month. A couple hours a month, then I encourage you to do that. Because what it will do is it will make you feel better. Because it gives you value, because you still impact others. That's the bottom line. Because, yes ma'am? Are the two hours always during working hours, or is there some flexibility? Okay, I don't know. That's the reason why if you have the slightest inkling in doing this, I would highly suggest go to the briefing at 11 o'clock because they're going to answer all of the questions, okay? Thank yep, you. David. Guys, my understanding is that these will be in the evening. They will be structured and supervised visits. Some of them will be here in the facility, in the building itself, and then the other one will be, let's say, a movie night or a game night or the weekend, that kind of thing. So, again, as Peter says, the briefing is going to go over all of this. Okay, so that being said, it's to give you value because you're helping somebody else. <clears throat> One of my greatest accomplishments throughout my entire career is when, well, let me back up. When I was a company commander in Hawaii, I had 300 plus soldiers in my command. And every week I would go and I would talk with specific soldiers. I was supposed to do a re-enlistment talk with them. It was required in the first 90 days and then somewhere between the tour and then 90 days before they got out. But I never talked re-enlistment. What I talked about was education and taking the ASFAT, increasing their score, so that when they were ready to make a decision as to what they were going to do, they had already built the bridges. And I told them, if you get out of the service and you go to college, or you get out of the service because you have a job lined up, I will shake your hand and I will thank you for your service. But if you get out of the service and you have no plan, then I assure you within 90 days you will be calling me and asking me to come back and there's nothing I can do for you. Two years later I'm at a staff meeting in Virginia and this lady comes up to me and she goes, Major Drew, do you remember me? And I says, I'm sorry, I don't. Turns out she was the education lady for the entire Schofield Barracks. She was the one that coordinated all of the college programs with USC and University of Oklahoma and all the other schools that were represented there. My commander came up and he goes, apparently you two know each other. And the lady looked at me and looked at the colonel and she goes, you know, sir, she goes, Major Droog had more soldiers working on their degree out of his one company than the entire 25th Division combined. And they had 25,000 soldiers. How do you think that made me feel? Because I talked to those soldiers, but I didn't know what they did. I didn't know what the outcome was. All I did was say, build bridges. That's what we're asking you to do with these kids, is help them build Everybody understand? Oh.